Have you ever looked at a video and asked yourself, why doesn't my colors look like that? I'm talking about when someone's using the same camera as you, but somehow they know something that you don't. Well, I'm about to let you in on all my secrets. What's up Alpha Universe, Jar Crawford here with another exciting tutorial. First of all, a massive thank you to Sony for making this possible. For those of you who don't know me, I make videos for a living. I specialize in tourism, travel and adventure films. Check out my website and Instagram for more info and updates. The reason for creating this video is because I often get a DM or an email from someone asking me, first of all, what do I shoot on and what do I do to achieve the look that I'm getting? I believe that great color is achieved from the moment you switch on your camera until the moment you hit the render button. So today, I'm going to share my 5 secrets with you on how to achieve great color in your films. If you're not a Sony shooter, don't run away just yet as you're bound to learn something. First, let's start with the basics, white balance. Now I know what you must be thinking, dude, that's so elemental, I know how to white balance. Well maybe you do, but if you're still not getting the colors you desire, this might be a big reason why and you don't even know it. I remember when I started making films. I watched the tutorial on white balance and the guy was hammering on it so hard that from that day onward I knew that white balance was something not to be taken lightly. White balance is so much more than just whites being white. It actually influences all the colors in your image. The most important being your skin tones. I can spot an incorrect white balance without having a single piece of white in the frame. A common mistake shooters make is thinking they can fix it in post without understanding the limitations that come with it. Now unless you're shooting raw video, you'll always be confronted with the need for in-camera accuracy. Yes, that means you have to shoot as if you're unable to change it in post to get it as close to white as possible. With compressed video, you're limited to how much you can correct it and there's an obvious difference in quality between a frame that was filmed at the correct white balance and one that wasn't but trying to correct it in post. When your white balance is off, you lose color and information that you're unable to recover with the temperature slider and it's crucial to get it done right in camera. You can always make your image colder or hotter in post, but trying to bring back color from a compressed file will degrade your footage if pushed too far. The reason many shooters mess up their white balance is by shooting on auto white balance. There's three reasons why auto white balance is a bad idea. Number one, the color might change while you're getting the shot especially if something new in the frame throws it off. No camera I've ever shot with gets the white balance right on auto all the time. In fact, there are many lighting situations where they struggle and you will not get the desired effect. Much like when you shoot on auto exposure and you're shooting towards the outside of a window, the room will go dark against your will. 3. When shooting with two cameras, it's essential to have them both locked on a consistent white balance because of angles they can differ. There are different solutions to getting it right the manual way but I only really use one and it's also the fastest. I always shoot on a custom Kelvin setting where I manually set the temperature. I've trained my eye to judge the white balance by using the method of extremes. The method of extremes involved going to both extremes of warm and cold to get a middle ground. Now everyone's eyes are different, so you have to train your eye by taking your footage into Premiere and using the white balance tool on white objects to get an idea of what's true white. Now, taking it to the next step, is where it gets interesting. Most people who custom white balance stop at this step, but you will often find yourself in a lighting situation where moving the Kelvin slider up and down is simply not enough. This is where the white balance shift comes in. This function gives you more freedom to fine tune your image by allowing you to alter the green and magenta channel, similar to the tint slider in Lightroom and Premiere, except that it happens in camera. There are many scenarios where you would need this. For instance, if you look at this scene, you'll notice a green cast on the wall and this is because of the sun hitting the green grass on the outside reflecting it inwards. By shifting in the opposite direction, you're essentially taking the excess of red or green out, making it more balanced and just like the white balance brings out the best colors in your frame. Another scenario would be a wooden floor where the sun bounces off creates a magenta or orange cast. Sometimes the cast is so strong that instead of trying to fix it in camera, you should try and diffuse it or break it completely. 
If the cast is created by a smaller space or object and the situation allows, I usually try to cover it up with some form of white cloth or a reflector, giving off a more desired bounce, but it depends on what you have at hand. What I love about my Sony is how quick and easy it is to adjust my Kelvin settings combined with the white balance shift. With 12 customizable buttons on the camera, I'm able to tweak it in such a way that I never have to go into my menu, unless I want to change my frame rate or format the card. To do a Kelvin adjustment, I've made my white balance button the right directional button on my wheel, which means if I want to do a shift, I just tap the same button again to go right. Another advantage over other cameras is the ability to see the colors change in real time without going into the menu and trying to guess the correct color. Okay, now that we've got white balance out of the way, I know the next one might seem obvious, but it is the biggest contributor to getting beautiful colors in your film. The biggest difference in image quality between Hollywood and small production companies like us is light. In the world of commercials and movies, a ridiculous amount of effort goes into lighting a scene. It's safe to say that good light will give you great colors. Yes, if you set aside the expensive cameras and lenses, the difference comes in with lighting. Now for someone like me, on most of the projects that I work on, I don't have the time or the resources to create a Hollywood lighting setup. However, what I can do is use a few basic tools that will dramatically improve the light in my scenes. I'm talking about something that's easy to manage and that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Shooting in the best light. Before we talk about these tools, let's start with natural light. Now I'm not going to tell you to only shoot during golden hour or overcast days, as it's pretty obvious that shooting in this light will give you better images, but we don't always have the luxury. This brand film I made for freedom of movement is a good example of where we only shot in the best light. We flew to the remote island of St. Helena, where you don't have the option of staying as long as you like, as the plane only arrives on Saturdays for a drop off and a pickup. We chose to stay the minimum of seven days, which means it's quite an expensive trip, so the budget didn't allow for additional crew. Because it was only me and the model, we didn't have any means of creating additional lighting setups, which meant we had to rely on good light. Manipulating light. A 5-in-1 reflector will work wonders and can add serious production value to your shoots. This small and inexpensive tool has helped me in countless situations and I simply won't go on a shoot without one. Here's some examples of shots I filmed in Turkey. All of these shots are filmed in direct sunlight in the middle of the day with only a diffuser between the subject and the sun held up by my assistant. The trick is to diffuse the close-up shots and leave only the wider shots for direct sunlight since it's easier to get away with a wide shot. We had to shoot the scene in the middle of the day and with such an intense close-up, there was no way I could show her face in direct sunlight, so I had my assistant run backwards with me while diffusing her face. As for the wider shot, I purposely filmed it from behind using the shade as cover and because you don't see the skin tone from the front, you don't really see that it's washed out. For this interview, I wanted to introduce the hanging silk as a background feature, but since it was in the middle of the day in the sun, I opted for a diffuser, giving the skin tones that beautiful soft look without losing the background. Even indoors, a diffuser can come in handy. In this example, we had to shoot the interview in the auditorium and the only way to get a well-framed background was at this exact spot, but we had some harsh top light coming in from above. Lights we couldn't switch off since it's the very lights you see in the background making the frame interesting. So by simply holding a reflector above his head, we were able to diffuse the top light and still get some good skin tones. You can take this a step further by using bigger diffusers or bigger reflectors like I did with the Cape Storm video. Since we had to shoot with four models over multiple locations, it was simply impossible to shoot only in good light, so we had to shoot the majority of the video in harsh daylight. I made use of a few tools, ranging from a sun swatter, a scrim gym, and also a California sun bounce for reflecting. With the help of two assistants, we were able to accomplish quite a lot. Here's some examples. In this frame, we used the California sun bounce on the wide side. Although it wasn't 100% daytime yet, the light coming through the trees was already harsh enough to make shooting difficult. Using the white bounce here is perfect to create those beautiful skin tones without making the skin shine. Now this was a tricky scene, shot at 12 o'clock in the heat of day without a single cloud in the sky. In the first frame, we used two tools to pull off this look. First we had a sun swatter cover the dash to diffuse the light coming in too strong in the front. Secondly, we used the scrim gym from the back to diffuse the sun falling on her face. The next frame was even trickier. 
because we had to light the inside of the car with a serious contrast between shadows and highlights. Using the sun rounds on the silver side through the front window did the trick here, with the sun swather still covering the dash. If you take a closer look, you will see the reflection in her eyes coming from the silver bounce. Now this frame was by far the hardest. Doing a winter shoot in full sun in summer is no easy task. We used three light sources here. First we put a scrim over the entire car to diffuse the arms coming in from the outside. Next we used the sun bounce on the silver side from the left with an additional daylight LED inside the car for fill. Last but not least is the use of artificial light. I mostly use LED panels, but the goal is to diffuse or bounce the light to appear softer, eliminating harsh shadows and shine on the skin. For interviews, it's easy since you can use light stands to support your gear. But what about B-roll? For this I have an assistant to follow me around with an LED light combined with a diffuser from my 5-in-1 set mentioned earlier. The following shots were all lit with one LED panel and a diffuser using only one assistant. For on-the-go filmmaking, this is an inexpensive way to create beautiful colors with minimal effort. Your picture profile can significantly alter the way your camera renders color. Adding to what you do with it in post-production, using the wrong profile can take away from your image, even if you shoot at the right white balance and in the best light. Therefore, it's crucial to try out a variety of picture profiles with the way you personally grade your footage. For example, I hardly shoot in S-Log because most of the work I do doesn't require me to do so. After many years of experimenting, I've managed to create my own picture profile that works with the way I grade and also works well with my LUTs. For Sony shooters, I've shared mine so feel free to try it out for yourself. Now it's time to take it into post. How you grade your footage can also add or take away from your final image. And in this example, I'm sharing two simple methods of getting better colors with a special emphasis on skin tones. Although I'm using Adobe Premiere for the example, the language is still the same, so you should be able to carry this out in Final Cut or other NLEs. We're going to work on this shot I captured in Nepal on a hiking mission. Now there's a lot I don't like about this image. The bluish magenta tones in the snow and the mountains in the background is horrendous. Furthermore, the skin tone is throwing me off. There's a reddish tint on her skin. It could be a result of the reflection coming off her jacket, but also simply because of the cold. It was minus 20 degrees on this morning. Now let's jump into my workflow. I'm using Lumetri Color in Premiere. First up, we've got curves. Man, I can say a lot about RGB curves, but one thing to be understood is that it's called color curves for a reason. RGB refers to red, green, and blue, the most prominent color changes that affect your images. The curve setting is way more powerful than basic correction, and it's not just about adjusting the brightness or playing with shadows and highlights, but more about the color and variety that comes with it. I always start with curves, and I do so by pushing the mid-tones as this affects the skin tones the most. I found this to bring out the best skin tones with my Sony footage, so if my shot is exposed correctly, I always push the mid-tones above the line. Next, I bring down the blacks for some contrast, and then most of the time I'll bring down the highlights a bit. Not exactly an S-curve. By toggling the curve effect, you can already see an improvement in the skin tone. After I have a basic curve set up, I will apply my LUT I created in Lightroom. This is the same preset I used to edit my photos, and since my photos are shot on the same camera with the same picture profile, it works well to convert it into a LUT, which I obviously bring down a notch. I usually use my LUT between 25 and 50%. After my LUT is applied, I'll do some basic correction. This will usually involve playing with the temperature or tint slider. In this case, I'll just bump up the overall exposure a bit. Next, I go back to my curves to fine tune it. Now to get rid of the ugly tint in the background, I'll go to the blue channel and by simply bringing down the blue in the mid-tones, you'll see the difference quite clearly. It already looks much better. This is not the same as dropping the temperature under basic correction, as it only affects the mid-tones where the temperature slider would affect the entire image and we don't want that. The second tool I use is the HSL secondary, but let's call it selective color grading, as that makes more sense. Now like I said, I'm always putting a special emphasis on skin tones, and there's one more step to see skin tones pop even further, and that is by doing a selective grade just on the skin tones. After selecting the color closest to the skin, I will play with the use saturation and luminosity sliders, and try my best to isolate it add some noise reduction, and put on a slight blur, and for now, we've got something to work with. This tool allows you to make changes on the color you selected. For example, 
I can play around with all these settings to create something interesting by enhancing or taking away this color. With skin tones, the biggest one I always use is the luminosity slider, as I really like when skin tones are bright and clean. As I'm taking up the luminosity, you can clearly see the improvement of the skin tone and a reduction in the redness. I'll take out some more red by adding some green and also make it a slight bit colder. By toggling this effect on and off, you can clearly see the improvement in the shot. Now sometimes you'll be confronted with the skin tone closer to colors around it, making it harder to isolate just the skin tone, for example, the hair or the jacket. Now in this case, you can simply add another Lumetri effect and do this exact selection, but you will isolate it by means of a mask. Because the subject is moving, you'll have to track the face in order to stay affected. In days of old, you would have had to do this tracking manually by keyframes, but Premiere has a nifty tracker built into it. All you do is go back to the first frame, select your mask and go to the play button that says track selected mask forward and voila. You'll see the mask staying on the face even as she moves around in the frame. Now, looking at the before and after, it's clear that playing around with curves and selective color truly enhances every aspect of the colors. Secret number five, contrasting color. This one leans more toward the creative side, and in this, I want to share with you how I think about color, not only when I shoot, but also in grading. By using this method, you're able to make your colors pop even more without adding real contrast, but simply the colors themselves doing it for you. Now, when filming on the go, we don't always have the opportunity to simply choose the colors we're presented with, but for something like an interview, there's room to play. Choosing a background. One of the most challenging tasks when filming an interview is finding a background that is pleasing to the eye, but also relates to the character or brings across a feeling. I spend a good amount of time looking for the right backdrop, and on bigger shoots, we use a dedicated location scout, someone who's constantly looking for our next shooting location. Here's some examples of where I used contrasting colors to convey a feeling. The musician. This guy was such a joy to interview. He had a warm vibe to him, and therefore I wanted a warm background. Now this is where white balance come in. Using only natural daylight as a key light, I had him sit in front of the store catching the outside light. Because daylight requires a warmer temperature, the tungsten lights in the background were extra warm as I took my Kelvin up to about 6000. This is also one of those examples where auto white balance would not work as it will pick up the warm tones in the background and trying to compensate will make the skin tones too cold, where in fact, the skin tones is the only thing that matters in the scene. By simply using a cold source as a key light and a warm source in the background, I was able to create a warm feeling, but still managed to nail the skin tones. Next, we've got the orchestra conductor. The first thing to notice is how dark the background is. Although you still get a pretty bokeh out of it, the darker background creates amazing contrast and really brings the subject out. I also went with this approach because of the nature of her work, performing in orchestras with a limelight on her. I tried to make the background feel like a crowd full of people watching her during a performance. Lastly, I'm going to show you an example of where I use contrasting color in the grading process. This is one of my favorite scenes from our trip to Nepal filmed at the famous monkey temple. If you look at the before and after, you'll see a change in color contrast. Basically what I did here is use the HSL secondary tool to selectively add more saturation to the wall on the right, trying to match it with the sarong. By masking the wall, I made sure I didn't add the effect to anything else in the scene. Taking it a step further, I added an additional mask and this time I simply desaturated the left of the frame to take away the attention from the tourists in the background. Taking the color contrast into account, we now have a solid focus point without distraction from the background. So there's no set way of doing this as each frame will be different, but you have to ask yourself how you can use color contrast to enhance the focus on your subject and how to amplify the feeling. It's an open canvas and the opportunities are endless. And that's it for today's video. I believe that many small changes can make a big difference. And by applying all of the principles I discussed, you should see an improvement in your colors. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you keep an eye on the Alpha Universe page for a continuous release of pre-recorded webinars and a variety of live sessions from all our ambassadors. Also follow the Sony Alpha SA page on Facebook and Instagram for regular updates and promotions. Thanks for watching.